Hello and thank you for stopping by watching this video tutorial on how to create a business card. And I'm going to show you how to do that with CorelDRAW, which is my vector and layout favorite software. And my name is Stefan Limblad. I'm an illustrator. I also work as a graphic designer and I'm based in Stockholm, Sweden. So let's start right away. We can go via File, New, or simply press, like it says here, Control plus N on the keyboard and that will open the dialog for creating a new document. I'm going to name this my card. I'm going to stay with number of pages. I'm just going to make it a sign for a uh, one page printed card. If I would go with the print on both sides, I could easily add an additional number of pages because that would create a multiple page document. And then CMYK, I'm going to stay with that because I'm going to do this for print. And business card, which it says here under dimensions of page size, usually uh, when I start a new document, it would say A4. But business card here is perfect. You can see it. You have a lot of different preset dimensions you could choose from. And I'm going to go with a business card. This is a standard business card size. I'd recommend you to choose those because who wants to have an odd business card that looks fun, but you have to fold and when you put it in your wallet. So I recommend, unless you have any specific needs uh, from your client, whatever, that have to make them really big, stay with some standard sizes. Um, it's fun with the odd ones, but people don't like, usually don't like to fold the cards. So I'm a meter guy, but I'm still gonna stay with inches. Otherwise, if you wanna see the size in millimeters, we have that here. Go back to inches. We have the resolution is 300. Go with that. It's going to print. That will give you a perfect print. You can go lower, 150, 200 sometimes, uh, if someone specifically asks you for that. But unless people say anything else, go with 300 dpi as a standard. If they want to have some different kind of uh, color profiles, you find them here. These are the default ones. So again, go with these. If nothing else has to, uh, is asked of you to do and click OK. I'm someone who really like using guidelines, so that's why I'm suggesting you go through Layout, Document Options here. This opens the dialog for Document Options and go down to Guidelines. In this case, it's um, tab number five, one, two, three, four, five, and then pick Page Borders. That will add guidelines to this document. You will understand as we go along why I like to have them here. Another thing is that I'm going to add some additional guidelines for the content, like the, the in contact information, the address, the logo, and everything I'm going to add in just a couple of minutes here. But before we do that, I'm going to also suggest you go to the property bar up here and choose guidelines, snap to guidelines. And then after that, go up here by the pick tool and little house symbol here. You see there the rulers meet here. If I use the uh, left key on my mouse and then just place it down here now, it will actually snap and it will wind up here perfectly in the corner. And if you look closer, it adds a zero vertically and horizontally. And that really helps now when I'm gonna add some extra guidelines. I already have the guidelines docker open, but if you wanna open it, on your own, you could easily go clicking the quick customize button here, the plus sign, and you'll find the guideline stalker over here. And now when we have that set up, I'm gonna add some guidelines. I'm gonna start by, let's see if, where we are. We are now in horizontal. Um, so I'm gonna start, uh, okay, I, pressed vertical it doesn't matter so we start by with vertical 0 0.118 I wrote this down previously and then click add and see what happens that add, instantly add a guideline here to the side now we have to have some additional here so I'm gonna you see there where it's there's a little minus sign there I'm gonna use that and click 0 0.118 and that should in the best of worlds add another one up here, which is now horizontally. So now we have these two, but I need one here, additional here vertically and horizontally. So I'm gonna 
add another one and I'm going to go with another measurement here now which is 3.382 and then click add and that add that one and then horizontally I'm going to add another measurement 1.882 and click add so now we have four guidelines which is perfect isn't it so now we're, when we've come this far we have to have some content and the content in this sense in this case is a logo the address the names and everything that you want to have on the card so I'm just going to copy and then go back to my card document and then I'm going to add it like this by pasting it what I'm now going to do is to move this to the side and you see that I've kind of already chosen what kind of fonts that I want in this document and now we're going to see I'm picked Frank Goth so if you like to change font for whatever reason design reasons very important of course you could go through the font list and you can find a lot of fonts the fonts that you have installed here and then you could choose any glyphs or um, to help you find much quicker and easier if you have a lot of fonts installed uh, and then now when I've chosen this one I could simply just drag it into and you will see now why guidelines are so fantastic but I'm actually gonna start by creating a rectangle and I have this color here that I I thought was kind of neat so I'm gonna create a new rectangle uh, so that's why we go to the toolbox rectangle tool and now we could just drag it here to the side and then add the same size as the card up here in the property bar where you see me changing now and 2.0 was the size wasn't it and then we simply click I clicked on a pick tool here so we see that it has the same size as the card but it's not centered is it so that's why you use the the letter P as in Peter press that on the keyboard and that will center it for you now we have a, a black outline so I want to I don't want to have a black outline so that's why we go to the color palette over here uh, you don't see outside the uh, there's a little uh, information thing that comes out out of the uh, recording screen here but just press right click that will actually uh, over here you see here there where is a red line so um, press that right and that will actually remove the outline it's still a rectangular object and I want to have the color the blue color that I just mentioned I use I'm using here in toolbox the color eyedrop tool and after I selected that it actually switched to become a fill tool so that actually fills it if I want to change that I could go down here um, and click to open the uh, edit fill dialog so now I can actually choose any other color and you as you can see here now you can see that there's a, like a live preview so you can change that any way you want you can actually add some textures and so on but I'm not going to do that so I'm I didn't even I just click the uh, the X sign so it the dialogue was closed or cancel so now we have this one here so now I'm going to show you how, why this is so fantastic to use these guidelines because we have them snapped so much easier now to probably actually to make it more visible I'm gonna make the blue into a white for the moment so you actually see what's happening here so I'm dragging it and as you can see it now gets snapped to the both guidelines because you see there's a blue bold line over there so now I'm gonna change the color back to the blue and now let's see what happens now we have to go to the objects here you see that the rectangle now covers the the company name so what I now do is to simply select here in the object stalker and drag that actually it didn't happen so we're gonna do it again we are gonna select that one and drag it as you can see here now and I'm gonna drag it almost to the button bottom and then I'm gonna color this one to white I'm actually going to do something more here actually now we have I want to have this logo and I thought it was kind of cool to just remove the E here and then 
see if I could just make some room for my little logo here. You can actually cut out this the S letter and so on and place it a little bit more proper, so to speak. But you can do that. But I just want to save some time here with the tutorial. And now I'm going to drag by hand from the ruler down here right away and add it here so it's tucked perfectly with the letters. So that actually helps me now when I'm going to select this one here again and then drag it up like this. So now I have a logo. I'm actually going to move that a little bit to the side like that. That would work. So now we have the company name over here. What I'm now going to do is to, to introduce something, the text tool, but also what this is. This is actually the uh, a text frame. So when we add some text here, for example, this uh, address here. And remember, for this tutorial, this address doesn't exist in real. I'm just playing around with English names and uh, Swedish postal numbers and city and so on. So this is not a real address at all. Uh, just for this tutorial. And then I'm going to add this other information here. As you can see, I've already made the T, E, and W here bold. And save some time. And now I'm going to add that here to this one here. And what I'm now going to do is to see if we can just move this up a little bit like that. And then move it down here so we can have it more in the align with the uh, guideline over there. So because it's uh, snapped to guidelines, it's so much easier to, uh, to get it in line here with the company name. And now we have to do that, that same thing with the company name on top of again. And that's, you see how easy that was. So now I'm going to use my name and my totally invented um, title. So now this is is artistic text, um, and this wins with the marching ants here is the paragraph text. So I'm just gonna select the whole text frame to change it into white. So that was kind of easy, wasn't it? So what I'm now gonna do is to introduce to something that I've been using on my own business card, my real business card, but also with card for clients, and that's actually something that's called. Um, QR code and with the QR code some people say oh it was such a hype and it doesn't work what what are you going to need it for and the thing is people are actually finding out that it's actually quite useful because you could give more or less any kind of value uh, to the bar uh, to the QR code so for in this reason for example if you have the QR code you go to the properties doctor here and as you can see it already have a value which is coral.com but if you want to change that to any of like your own website address or a client's website address, that would actually, when people scan it, take bring them to that website. And also, if you want to have like a contact, instead you will have the opportunity to give to put like a first name, last name, email address, and all these things here. And because you see that it's selected the card type to be V card, this would actually add all this information into people's address book like in an email client or something like that. So you could basically uh, use any kind of um, link uh, that you want. So for example if you would like to use the, um, the URL, URL you can actually put the link to your LinkedIn profile as well which is something that I use sometimes. So you can actually have um, two bar uh, QR codes or what have you. It looks kind of empty just by itself like that. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool from the toolbox and I'm going to create a little frame around it because I thought that would be kind of nice and neat, so to speak. And then center, the, center that a little bit together and drag it back down here. So I'm going to make that like that and then I'm gonna select the rectangle and then make it white and we'll soon finish with this video tutorial here 
So I'm just gonna get for for the fun of it. I'm actually just gonna see to that these are aligned to each other, and then I'm gonna use the two point line tool. Actually, gonna go back and make that again. And I thought it, I thought it kind of nice to have this as a marker that saying scan this and it will give you the contact information that I want you to get on from my cards. You can either keep the paper forever or throw it away later on if you like. But the whole idea is to give people the opportunity to choose how they want to use your business card. The whole thing is when you're network networking is to give people the means and make it easy for you to network. So now we have this, I'm going to remove the guidelines. So now we have a business card here in front of us. Just to say to tell you up here on the property bar by clicking this icon up here, you make them visible or, or unvisible guidelines. So now we have a business card and I hope you we're finished now with this tutorial and I hope it will help you in your further endeavor when you're going to design your own business card. And I hope it give you some ideas and make it easier for you to start working with Core Raw or and so forth. You have a wonderful day wherever you are and thank you for watching.